John. Great. Thank you, John One. He's uh you're responsible pretty much for this car, right? That's like, right. What's the official title, product planner? Uh, one of the development leaders. Development leaders, yeah. yeah. A little bit more than product planner, <laughs> I guess. So this is the one of the new variants of the new Civic. Yes. And this is the coupe. And it's really a different car, right? I mean, it's not just like a name change. It's like completely different in many that, ways. That's right. So the, we have a brand new platform. Um, that was developed and basically it's applied to the sedan and then also now to the coupe that we're driving today and then soon it'll be on the hatchback and then the other sporty variants coming out yeah. later. Yeah. But the sedan compared to this one, it's also very different. It's like shorter, wider, yeah. so, so the lower. car is lower and shorter um, and then um, compared to the previous coupe, it's also wider and also actually it's uh, shorter than the previous coupe. But the, but the passenger volume and the trunk volume is much larger than the previous one. And, uh, is, this car obviously aims at a different audience, right? I mean, because the yeah. sedan is like a more car for like uh, regular drivers, but yeah. this is like a, an enthusiast car in, right. in a way. So what we wanted to do is the coupe usually gets a uh, younger, uh, more single kind of buyer. And really it's kind of our way to attract that kind of millennial buyer into the Honda brand. Yeah. And then uh, we can impress them and they'll be happy with the car and then they'll, when their life state changes, they can go buy a, a Civic sedan or a Accord sedan or CRV and just keep staying in the Honda family and grow with us. What are the, the general aspects of this car besides like the measurements that you already mentioned? I think it's five inches shorter. Shorter in the back, yeah. So, so if you look at the dimensions, you'll see that the front overhang and the rear overhang are almost identical now. So it really does make the wheels pushed out to the corner and the car is already wider and lower. So it really does make a dramatically different silhouette. So it's really aggressive and uh, sporty. Uh, what about uh, engines? You also have two? Yes, uh, so we'll have two engines. Well? Yeah, we have two engines just like on the sedan. So we have a two liter naturally aspirated uh, two engine and then we have a 1.5 liter direct injected turbo. Two liter is available with CVT and six speed manual transmission and then the 1.5 liter turbo is available with a CVT. Yeah, the manual, even though uh, most people nowadays don't, mm -hmm. don't really care yeah. for it, in this particular car, mm -hmm. people actually all were like almost demanding it from Honda, right? That's right. So we didn't want to drop it, so we developed a, a new six speed. So it's really a fun car to drive, actually, and you've driven it. Yeah. Even though this is obviously spoiler than the sedan and all that, there's still a lot of room, and I don't know if this was like a you know, the thought process of, of the car. A lot of people modify these cars after they buy them. Is that the case? I mean, when, when you go through the, the process of, of developing this car, you have that in mind? We do, we just want to make, but it's also within the entire lineup, we know what we have to package for. So, you know, in the US we have um, 16 inch and 17 inch wheels, but other markets might require bigger wheels or bigger tires. So we always yeah. make sure we can accommodate that. And then, then there's margin for the aftermarket. Um, but we don't necessarily make specific accommodations no but, of course yeah. yeah but we understand what what will be done yeah and that's that's been the case with this car it's like hugely yeah. popular i mean with a normal base as as it is like stock but a lot of people do a lot of things with this car especially the coupe and as yeah. curtis talked to at the beginning of the presentation that the uh, coupe buyers are more likely to accessorize so we do yeah. have more um, stylish accessories and, and this car has been uh, very very popular Mm -hmm. uh, for what what generation is this for the coupe? I mean, the, the, for the Civic in general is 10th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, for the coupe itself, this is the sixth generation. So it started back in 93. Um, and that was also um, developed at uh, in America, actually, at our Honda R&D Center. So it was yeah. designed in LA and then developed in Ohio. And that was one of the first projects our R&D company ever. And, and as I did this with the with sedan, you are able to put a lot of technology in these cars. I mean, you have different uh, different variants of the car, but like the top of the line has like a technology that just like maybe five, 10 years ago was not even available in most luxury cars. And, and, and that's true. And what we wanted to do was to kind of not limit that to some more expensive car or bigger size car, right? We wanted to kind of democratize those features and you shouldn't be penalized for wanting a smaller car, right? This is a still a compact car, but Know, someone's lifestyle life stage might require a smaller car but we don't want them to suffer or not be allowed to have the same kind of features so so what are the things that the highlights of, of, of that technology offering for this uh, civic I mean, coupe exactly from a chassis point of view we have a lot of strong 
capable hardware. We have the variable gear ratio, dual pinion, electric power steering. We have um, hydraulic compliance bushings, disc brakes all around, big tires, big brakes, really powerful upgraded booster. And uh, I was uh, actually referring a little bit to the technology package. Oh, okay, yeah, and we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the favorites for um, everyone. We have a touch Which screen. Which works fabulously. I mean, yeah. we just tried it and it's like so <laughs> easy to plug in yep. the thing and you don't have, you don't need apps, you don't need That's anything. Right. It's just like in and out and like yeah. you're, it's working. Yeah, and the cars with the navigation, we have the new Garmin system. That's really well received, worked great. Um, um, and then um, just look, for example here, the electric parking brake. Yeah. But that clear, completely clears it up and you can really see obviously how much then, higher yeah, the console is. This uh, yeah. cluster in the middle is yeah. huge it's because you can even take this yeah, you can out. Take that out. Yeah, you can take that out. And then, and then you feel like six so many iPads maybe. <laughs> One for every person? Yeah, well, exactly. Well, five. Well, how about that? Five. Like five exactly yeah. and a few. Yep. And then you uh, a few iPhones right. there. And then at the bottom you can see there's a big slot for a one liter Nalgene bottle. Yeah. So really. So, so John, this is still considered a compact car, but it has right. grown a lot. It I mean, this is almost like the coupe home that court for the previous <laughs> generation. <laughs> oh, I don't know the yeah. dimensions, but... Uh, the, the car's classification is still compact, and that's kind of where we position the car. But it is really spacious, and we packaged it properly, so it's low and short, but still plenty of space for four or five people and their luggage. So again, talking about the, the big difference with the sedan, uh, the thing that strikes uh, us now when we saw it for the first time, like the exterior design, it's it's pretty, pretty sharp. I mean, the, especially the lights in the back. Yeah, yeah so it's got uh, full LED illumination and it goes across. And something that's unique is the on the trunk, that light that goes across isn't consistent. If you look at it, it kind of dims as you go towards the center to about half brightness. So it's okay. a very unique look and, the, and that's why it took so, it, it took so long to develop properly and and the reason is even though the light in, in the daytime kind of goes across at the nighttime we wanted it to fade so it still mimics the sedan's appearance of a C you know how yeah. it has a C signature for Civic so we wanted to keep that but we have a different styling motif so we kind of dimmed it as you go down as you go towards the center so the Honda Civic uh, sedan debuted I mean the 10th generation debuted mm -hmm. with the sedan now this variant and yeah. there's plans for more and more, more right? Yeah. We're so, we're, so we're gonna introduce the hatchback soon. Um, and then right after that will be the SI variants and then the Type R finally to top off the Civic lineup. Yeah, especially top off. I mean, a lot of top, people yeah. are waiting for that yes. car for a long time. And you have never offered that car in the US, right? No, no that's right, we've never. So we're really excited to bring it. All of our fans have been asking, so we will give them what they have asked for. So the sedan won uh, the Car of the Year award. That's right. Um, so is there any pressure to go back to back with the coupe? Because the coupe <laughs> won in 2006. Well, right? we can make a new category. How about that? <laughs> coupe Car of the Year. All right. Yeah, but we're quite proud of the Honda team everywhere. We're so excited and proud of the achievement. And uh, you know, when we were working it, we, we knew we had something special, so we kept pushing yeah. to finish the development so we can make it the best. Well, thank you very much for your time, John. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a fantastic car to drive, a, a lot of fun, and uh, as you said, like all the other variants that are coming up, I mean, I can't wait to drive. <laughs> I'm Great. sure that you you can wait to, to share with all the, the Honda fans all around the, the US right. and the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you.